Hi, I'm Patrick Slade. I'm a fifth year PhD student at Stanford working with Scott Delp. And today I'll be talking to you about an open source and wearable system for estimating 3D human motion in real time. So clinics are amazing and provide a bunch of different mobility solutions by looking at human movement. So these solutions include diagnosing musculoskeletal disorders, uh, interventions, or monitoring movement. But unfortunately, clinics impact is limited to the patients that it can reach. So people who are living near the clinic, who can afford the clinic, um, and who have time to come in for these visits. And so the goal of this project is to provide a wearable and real-time motion capture system to translate these clinical tools to, be, to become at-home solutions. So we'll be talking about the OpenSense real-time system, uh, which you can see here. Basically, it's a pack that you wear on your back, which has a microcontroller and then a series of IMUs worn on different body segments to track motion. This system computes kinematics in real time, and it uses both wearable sensing and computation. So everything's computed on board by this microcontroller. So it's very portable, you can use it in any environment. Um, and it's fully open source. So both the software, which is built on OpenSim and the hardware, we provided uh, materials to replicate them and tried to make that as simple as possible. So some fun facts about why you might wanna try it. Um, the system costs about $100 for the base components and then $20 for each additional IMU, so each additional body segment you want to track. It weighs 400 grams. Most of this is rechargeable battery. Um, and it provides about four hours of recording per battery. So if you want to record all day, you just swap out the batteries. Uh, there's no soldering or code to assemble this system. So it's just plug and play. It's very simple um, and it's customizable. So you can have up to 14 IMUs at the location shown in this figure. And all you have to do to customize this is just edit a text file saying where you're going to put IMUs on the body. So let's see it in action. Here on the left, you can see a person moving. And then on the right, you can see their real-time motion reconstructed. You'll note that at the start of some of the trials, the person is in a quiet standing pose. And this is how we calibrate the motion before we start recording. So there you can see the person in the pose and then starting to record. So you have to hold that standing position for about three seconds. Um, and since everything's open source, you can customize a different initial pose if that's better for your application. We validated this system with optical motion capture for both lower limb and upper limb activities just to get a benchmark on performance. Of course, you'll wanna validate this for your specific application. You can see an example of the upper limb tasks that we used comparing motion capture to the IMUs. And again, the system is built on OpenSim. So if you want to extend the capabilities of the system to add um, different biomechanics analyses or other tools, it's very easy to do so, making it kind of a flexible tool. And I definitely highlight um, the open source materials that we have for this. So if you want to watch a video of me assembling the system in 15 minutes, you can. And you can check out our step-by-step -step guide of um, how to build it and upload the, the code and stuff like that. So for our validation, we had five subjects walk on a treadmill for three minutes, and then we looked at the average kinematics. So here on the right, you can see some sagittal plane joint kinematics. These were computed uh, at 30 Hertz um, for the IMUs, which is computed in real time. And the average error was about 4.4 degrees. So fairly low. And you can see here that the, the visually it correlates quite well and has a very high Pearson correlation coefficient. And if you want to see additional details about this or about um, a running analysis we did, I would recommend you check out our preprint. Um, on average, we saw that the joint estimates drifted by about one degree per minute. So after several minutes, we recommend that you recalibrate. And this is pretty simple since you just do the standing recalibration. We also did an upper extremity validation where we had people either simulate a cutting task or do a lumbar range of motion test. Again, we saw fairly low errors of 5.6 degrees, depending upon which joints. Um, and if you want additional details about that, I suggest you check out our preprint. And the last thing to note is that the number of sensors limits computation. So because this is real time, if you have more sensors, um, the computation rate is lower than a fewer sensors. We also have an offline mode where you can just record the IMU data and then compute kinematics later, and you can operate at a much faster frequency. Uh, thanks for your time. If you want to check out our open source materials, we have them listed here. Um, and I'm really excited to hear what you'd like to use this system for or ways that we can support other research with this system. So let me know. Thanks.